Armando Hasurigan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurigan. Please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to continue on from the bacteria, the structure, and look at the growth, reproduction, and classification, partly. Now, an important thing to know before looking at uh, the growth of a bacteria is that we have to understand that a bacteria is a prokaryote. All bacteria are prokaryote, prokaryote, meaning that they are single-celled organisms. Humans, such as ourselves, have multiple cells, making up us, one organism. Bacteria has only one cell, making up that organism. So, um, the growth of a bacteria is defined in terms of an increase in cell number rather than cell size. And how the bacteria replicate is not through mitosis and meiosis, but through a process known as binary fusion. So bacteria reproduce by binary fusion. So here we have a simple bacteria with the DNA inside, circular DNA, might I say, nuclear matter. Next, the DNA will be replicated during binary fusion, replicated like so. And then the DNA will divide, and what's called a transverse septum will be formed by the cell wall and the membrane. So sort of like a dint. So here we have the transverse septum. And then, the, um, after some time, a transverse septum will be completely formed, which will enable the daughter cells, these two cells, to separate now. So now we have two bacteria cells. And that completes binary fusion, how the bacteria reproduces itself. Now, the time taken for a cell, the bacteria, to reproduce itself is called the generation time. And this can vary depending on the type of organism and the environment conditions. So, under favorable conditions, for example, the bacteria can reproduce uh, a lot. Under bad conditions, they won't reproduce at all. You can calculate the generation time by doing simple, simple mathematics. So uh, where generation time is equal to time taken divided by the number of generations. But we won't really look into that now. What we will look into now, however, is the growth of a bacteria. And we can um, investigate the growth of a bacteria by, putting, by isolating a bacteria and putting it inside a medium, such as a petri dish, which makes the bacteria in culture now. And under certain laboratory conditions, we can view the growth phases of a bacteria. Bacteria has four growth phases, and we can view this on a graph. The x-axis of this graph is increase in time, and the y-axis is the logarithmic number of cells. So this, now we are looking at the four phases of growth for a bacteria. The first phase is known as a lag phase. And cells, and in this phase, the bacteria need to adapt to the new medium because it was just placed there. After some time, we have the log phase, where cells are in optimum growth state and perform binary fusion, reprodu um, re reproduction process. And as you can see, during the log phase, there is a log logarithmic increase in cell number. So what this means is that he, we start off with one bacteria. When it performs binary fusion, we have two. And then a binary fusion again, we have two to the power of two. We have four. And then this process will continue, two to the power of three. And then two to the power of four. And this process where the bacteria keeps dividing in a linear sort of fashion is known as a logarithmic increase in growth or an exponential increase. And so this is the log phase. Now after the log phase, we have the third phase, which is a stationary phase. And this is, uh, and as you can see, it just goes flat. The number, logarithmic number of cells uh, just becomes flat. It doesn't increase. And this is due to the exhaustion of some critical new nutrition or um, the accumulation of waste product, which basically essentially slows the growth or stops the growth of the bacteria in the culture. And then after the stationary phase, we have the death or decline phase. And this, is, this essentially occurs through the continuation or accumulation of waste products or exposure to oxygen, perhaps. And in this phase, you can see that the number of bacteria decreases.
I hope that made sense. The graph I just drew essentially showed us the four phases of bacterial growth. But of course, the growth of the bacteria had to be under a good condition, under laboratory conditions. So essentially, there are requirements for, ba for bac bacterial growth. And there are many factors which influence bacterial growth. The, fact, the main factors affecting growth that we will look at now are temperature, pH, waste, water, sorry, and osmotic pressure, and also oxygen. There is also nutritional requirements, which we will not look into in this video. Before we continue on with the requirements for bacterial growth, we have to understand that each bacteria is unique in that they require uh, different, uh, different temperatures, different pH, different oxygen concentrations for growth. And let's begin by looking at temperature first, first and see how it affects bacterial growth. By looking at a graph, here we have a graph. The y-axis represents the rate of growth, so the rate a bacteria uh, grows. And remember, the growth of bacteria is not an increase in size, but an increase in number. And the x-axis is the temperature from negative 10 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees, which is near boiling point, right? So this first graph, where we see an increase in rate of growth, um, are, are a group of bacteria known as psychrophiles. And they are essentially cold-blooded, actually cold-loving, rather. And their optimum growth is about 10 degrees Celsius, so really cold. And we can see at the 10 degrees Celsius that we have optimum growth for these types of bacteria. The other type of bacteria are known as mesophiles, and their growth are optimum at about between 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. And as you can see by the graph, the top is roughly around this area. And then we have bacteria known as thermophiles, which grow mostly um, under hotter conditions, where the optimum is about 60 degrees Celsius. And after this, we can even have other extreme thermophiles, which have optimum growth over 80 degrees Celsius, near nearly 100. So from this graph of temperature, we can see how there are different, the bacteria, different bacteria require different temperatures for optimum growth. Next, let's look at pH. pH also is an important factor affecting bacterial growth. pH, if you know, uh, goes from 0 to 14, where 0 is, um, well, towards 0 is more acidic, towards 14 is more basic. Different bacteria require different pH in order to grow optimally. If they are grown in a, in a, in a pH that isn't, is not suitable for them, they will die, essentially. Bacteria which grow best in a pH between 0 and 6, which is uh, more to the acidic side, are known as acidophils, meaning they love acids. Bacteria which grows optimally between a pH of 6 and 9, let's just say, are called neutrophils because they're neutral, and 7 is a neutral pH. Then we have bacteria which grows optimally in, under basic conditions, so a pH of 10 and over. They are known as alkalophiles. Another factor which um, affects bacteria, the growth of a bacteria, is the water and osmotic pressure. Bac bacteria grow best in areas saturated with water. The increase in pressure of a bac uh, in a bacteria or a cell causes the cell to burst as well. And so an optimum pressure is required. Oxygen is, n is another fact factor which greatly influences bacterial growth because Bacteria can be either anaerobic or aerobic, or in between. So let's, let's look at some classifications of, of, of um, bacteria with oxygen. First of all, we have what's called obligate aerobes, which means these are the types of bacteria which requires oxygen in order to survive. Then we have facultative anaerobes, which grow with or without oxygen, but they grow better with oxygen. Then we have aerotolerant anaerobes, which are bacteria which grow equally well with or without oxygen. Obligate anaerobes are bacteria cells which die in the presence of oxygen. And then we have these special, special cases of bacteria, such as microaerophils, 
which are bacterial cells which won't grow at normal atmospheric oxygen levels, which is 20%. Because, so, for example, they won't grow in the room you are sitting in now. But these bacteria require only some oxygen for growth, between 2 and 10%. Then we have capnophils, which are bacteria which require carbon dioxide. They're carbon dioxide loving. So from all these factors which affect bacterial growth, I hope you can begin to appreciate um, all these factors which can affect bacterial growth. Uh, I hope this video was okay. I hope you enjoyed it. it made sense. It might be confusing between generation time and growth phases. You can read up on that if that's still confusing. Thank you.